How will that be different than what's going on just right now? Will you have more meetings? Will well, you be visiting? Um, we're going to change the way we've been working so far. You know, we had this Barcelona process that we mm. set up, I think it was in 1995. So now we had more than 10 years experience with that process. It was a very interesting process. It was a necessary one, but we all have the impression, not only France, but the European Commission and most of the member states, that we had reached a certain level and that we needed to find a new momentum to go a little bit further. So what we're trying to do is to have a, a new uh, um, momentum given to the Barcelona process, that is what we're going to call the Union for the Mediterranean, uh, whereby we would have more concrete proposals on one side and that we will work on a, on a clear partnership with our partners in the south of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. In other words, it won't be anymore the Europeans, you know, pushing their ideas and forcing the Mediterranean countries to follow suit. We will have a clear dialogue and we will get agreement on both sides being equal uh, around the Mediterranean. So we're going to set up new way of working together, new institutions with a, a, new, uh, a new secretariat, mm -hmm. uh, um, the uh, new summits taking place uh, nearly every year, if possible, or every two years, uh, and therefore the heads of state and government meeting more regularly together to try to um, uh, push this momentum as much as possible. Since uh, France had the presidency um, in 2000 and so forth, Europe has changed greatly. Mm -hmm. um, and another objective I know is the Lisbon Agenda, which is focused on economic mm -hmm. growth and development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how important is that going to be under France's leadership? Well, it's going to be uh, important. In fact, we uh, in France have asked uh, one of our uh, good experts, uh, a very renowned expert, Monsieur Gwen Tanuji, uh, to make a report precisely on the way the Lisbon strategy could be there also, could be given a, a new momentum and we could put more dynamism into, the, into that uh, process. And he's come out with some interesting ideas, so we're going to circulate his report to our European mm. partners and try to see what we can do from that on. Just let me give you one example. One of the mm. ideas behind the uh, Lisbon strategy was that the Europeans would um, uh, bridge the gap that they have at the present moment in, in, uh, in the field of research and in technological innovation. You know, Europeans uh, have an amount of research that amounts to something like 1.8% of their total G G GDP. Mm. Whereas in a country like the United States, you are around 3% or even more. And our intention when we started the Lisbon process was to reach that 3% target. Today we're still around 1.8%, so we haven't been able to bridge the gap. So we will have to put more efforts into that, more financial efforts, more concentration of all our efforts in order to reach that level of research, innovation and technological development. We've heard about the European Technological Institute. Yes. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it was, it's this idea of having uh, a European institute with all the uh, good search researchers around Europe could meet together, put together their expertise in uh, different fields and try to work together in close cooperation with their foreign partners, the Americans, oh, really? of course, among others, so that uh, by gathering all the expertise of, uh, that we all have, we will manage to be um, in, a, I would say, up to the par with some of our great uh, competitors around the world. Would there be an opportunity there for uh, our Georgia Institute of Technology, for instance? I hope so. I hope so. You know, we are already trying to do that on a bilateral basis between France and Georgia Tech. We've had uh, some close links. We have set up some scientific programs together, and we intend to go on like that. But to be able to do that also at the European level would be great. Mm -hmm. How about in terms of uh, the youth of Europe? Mm -hmm. uh, I know that this is another uh, interest mm -hmm. of the, um, the Lisbon agenda and so forth. Mm -hmm. We heard about the Erasmus program. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, is that working? And is, is that having working? an impact? Yeah, it's working. It's having an impact in the, in the sense that the uh, young European students now add to their uh, national 
uh, training and uh, uh, they add a European training also and they bring a European dimension to their studies, uh, to their university studies. And uh, we all think this is very important. You know, it has a lot to do with the idea that young European students must be more aware of European solidarity and the fact that we have much in common. So this has been working now for nearly 20 years. Uh, right. We have improved the process and it uh, uh, has gained a real great momentum and it's working very well. It's very popular among young students. There is even um, movies that uh, have been uh, uh, released that uh, um, you know tell about the lives of those young students, French students who go to live in Barcelona, in Spain or in Britain or in Germany. That's great because it's, uh, it's a good exchange between, between those young people. Just in terms of uh, contemplating their lives, how do you think Europe will appear in 10 years or so with these people, um, these, these uh, students that mm -hmm. have gotten this European exposure? Yeah. How will that impact Europe overall? Well, it, it, you know, the whole idea about Europe is to give this uh, uh, consciousness, this awareness among uh, our population that we're not only French, uh, British, German, Portuguese, uh, uh, Spanish, etc. But there, there were, they were that, uh, of course, because we have our own nationality and we very much mm -hmm. stick to that. But at, apart from that and above that, we had also European citizenship and uh, the idea that we were all belonging to a same, uh, to a same union. And this uh, awareness, you have to get it through, um, not only through the culture, not only through the fact that now you can travel along uh, the whole Europe, not only through our single currency, but also through education and the fact that we are being educated uh, in our high schools, but also in our universities. And you yeah. see that as eventually mm -hmm. having a positive economic yeah. impact? Yes, I think so. because. Yeah, people will feel more, um, it will be easier for, I think, for, uh, European citizens in the future to go from one country to another, work a few years in one country, then come back to their country of origin and have this uh, new habit of uh, traveling along and finding themselves at home uh, everywhere. And I think this is very important. You won't make Europe only through regulation and legislation. You will make it also through the everyday life and the feeling that you belong uh, to a same family. Through your meetings with the consuls uh, today, mm -hmm. has there been any uh, common concerns about uh, the United States and its um, transatlantic relations with Europe? No, I don't think this was concern. It was more about how is Europe uh, going to work with the new administration once it will be elected? What kind of messages should we uh, try to uh, bring forward to the new administration? On which issues should we work together? Uh, those are not concerned because I think we're looking forward uh, for this new uh, uh, relationship with the uh, next administration in a very positive and constructive way. But we have to prepare ourselves for that and exchange views among the Europeans about precisely what are the messages, how do we we'll put them forward, uh, how do we work uh, with the next administration when it comes up. And I think the main idea behind all this is that we're really looking for uh, uh, a strong dialogue with the next administri administration, whoever they are, uh, we will want to work together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.